The draft is over and the newsworthy portion of free agency is over for the most part. There might be some news coming in soon about corner James Bradbury to the Las Vegas Raiders at some point after he's released from the New York Giants. But there won't be a whole lot more news in terms of star player movement. As most of you know, I'm against the idea of Bradbury, but I'm starting to warm up to it. I'm riding with whatever the new regime wants to do anyway. After all, they've done a great job of bringing in talent. As a matter of fact, they won the AFC West arms race, meaning they improved their team the most. So how does the AFC West stack up now? We start with the Broncos who are at number four. Their big get this offseason was quarterback Russell Wilson, seen here throwing the deep ball to DK Metcalf. And here throwing deep to Tyler Lockett. Wilson still has that big arm to get the ball deep down the field. He can still scramble and throw on the run. Still take off and run if there's nothing else there. But Wilson made a lateral move from last in the NFC West to last in the AFC West because Cortland Sutton and Jerry Judy are not DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Many are happy for Wilson leaving the Seahawks offensive line behind. He has taken more than his fair share of sacks over the years with the Seahawks and would have taken more if he wasn't as mobile as he is. And he's leaving an offensive line that gave up 46 sacks last year. Good for 8th worst in the NFL. But how much better are things gonna get? The Broncos gave up 40 sacks last year. And left tackle Garrett Balls should not have promised that Wilson wasn't going to get hit anymore because he can't stop Max Crosby. He can't stop Chandler Jones either. And good luck with Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack too. Now we're on to the Los Angeles Chargers. And you remember him, Khalil Mack. At one time he was the most dominant defensive player in the NFL, but Aaron Donald took over that. T.J. Watt has even taken over the most dominant edge rusher in the NFL. But Max still has plenty of this to get to the quarterback, which is why he will be a factor. He can still bull a guy right back into the quarterback. He's also still really good against the run, which will help the Chargers improve their run defense. Max still has everything he had when he was with the Raiders. The question is, can he stay healthy? The Chargers' other big get is corner J.C. Jackson, who can play off, or press man. He's supposed to be a shutdown corner, but those guys don't exist anymore. When Jackson faces a good receiver, he gets taken. He doesn't have the hops for a jump ball. And he has problems with guys with a good release like Stephon Diggs. Here quarterback Josh Allen and Diggs are going to back shoulder him. And here Diggs is going to run right by him. Good luck covering Devontae Adams if you can't cover Diggs. The Chargers just might make the playoffs from the third spot in the AFC West. Now we're on to the second place team, the Las Vegas Raiders. And one of their big gets is Chandler Jones, a forced fumble machine. He gets after the quarterback and that ball is coming out when he gets to him.
at 6'5", 265 with those long vines for arms, he's unblockable. And it's not enough for him to get a sack. He has to get that ball out. Yeah, Deacon Gakwe is a good pass rusher that can get the ball out too, but he can't play the run like this. Those long arms make him just as unblockable against the run as they do when he's rushing the passer. And of course the Raiders got the get of all gets this offseason. Devontae Adams, the best receiver in the league, who can go up and get the ball over the middle and finish through contact. He's a great option in the red zone, especially with the fade. He can beat you deep with his route running. He can beat you deep with his release. Watch this. And he can hit you with the big play running after the catch. Now we're on to the division champion Kansas City Chiefs. Tyreek Hill has been a problem for the Raiders for a long time now. Okay, well actually he's been a problem for everyone for a long time now. All that speed and all that big playability has left the Chiefs. I'm not sold that offense isn't going to be explosive without him. I've seen him do it before with the 21 point quarter with Hill Hurt. In 2019 second round pick Miko Harbin was the main deep threat. I expect him to assume the role this year. Now, the Chiefs went into the 2022 NFL Draft armed and dangerous with two first round picks and two second round picks because of the Hill trade. And what did they do? They went all defense in the first round, starting with corner Trent McDuffie from Washington. They went back to the same place they got Marcus Peters. They teach those guys how to cover over there. So they got McDuffie to hopefully offset the loss of Charvarius Ward. With their second first round pick, the Chiefs got defensive end George Karloftis out of Purdue. I hope I pronounced his name right. The 6'4", 270 pounder reminds the Chiefs of Jared Allen, and they would know. They took Allen in the 2004 NFL Draft. They still have quarterback Patrick Mahomes, tight end Travis Kelsey, and Hardman on offense. So they got two defensive players in the draft to help defend their AFC West title. Wilson made a lateral move. His defense is a little better than what it was in Seattle, but his receiver core is nowhere near as good and his pass protection is not much better. The third place Chargers will probably get into the playoffs. Once the body starts breaking down, that's it. So we'll see what happens with Mack. And Jackson's gonna have a hard time covering AFC West receivers, especially Adams. The Raiders improved the most with Chandler and Adams as their top gets. And the Chiefs, I gotta respect the division champions. Thank you very much for watching, see you next time.